Now, what may be the most remarkable coming out event we've ever seen. A little girl is unable to speak a word or connect to the world around her in any way. Or so everyone thought until she turned 11 and suddenly something remarkable happened. ABC's John McKenzie has the story of a girl breaking out of her own body. You don't know what it feels like to be me. When you can't sit still because your legs feel like they're on fire, or it feels like a hundred ants are crawling up your arms. How is it that these powerful words came out of this flailing body? People look at me and assume I am dumb because I can't talk. Something extraordinary happened to this 14-year-old who was written off as mentally deficient. Something that may help unlock the mysteries of a baffling disorder. What do I want? I want to be like every other kid. But I can't. Because I am Carly. Born in Toronto, Canada, Carly Fleischman was two years old when it became clear she was not keeping up with her twin sister Tara. When you're told your child is going to be developmentally delayed, that they might achieve uh, the developmental level of a six-year-old, it's like being kicked in the gut. When Arthur Fleischman and his wife Tammy learned the diagnosis was autism, they expected the worst, that the twins were headed in different directions. And how bad did it get for Carly those first few years? Awful. Um, part of her delays uh, prevented her from walking, from sitting up. It was clear that Carly, like most autistic children, was lost in her own world, perpetually swimming underwater. And all the doctors would say, you're the parent. You should do as much as you feel you need to do for this kid. Carly, stand up. The Fleischmanns were on their own. Experts told them that early intervention was critical. You use your fork. So ever since Carly was three, her therapy has been intensive, unrelenting. This took about 40 to 60 hours a week of one-to-one -one therapy. She always had about three to four therapists working with her. And if you're not getting results with one approach, you move on and you try something else. You didn't give up. You pushed Carly. And when you look in Carly's eyes, you can see an innate intelligence. So we never gave up. We never gave up. But if there was intelligence, Carly's ceaseless rocking, flailing arms and tantrums hid any trace of it. Worse, she couldn't speak. Not a word. I did not have any expectation that she would have a fluent form of communication. Dr. Nicole Walton Allen is a clinical psychologist who led Carly's therapy program. Her profile was that of a child who was severely autistic and more than likely moderately mentally retarded. And did you ever think about institutionalizing her? We had friends saying, you know, you've been plugging away, spending thousands of dollars on therapy.